Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome once again to the Eastern Wing of the Stink Bug Works. We've been <clears throat> inventing things and making stuff. And look a hill, look a hill, look a hill. With the exception of this little piece right here and an outlet piece, the shrimp boat, the insert name here boat, is done. It's going to get a maiden. Let's see, this is... Oh, the gardener's here. I can hear the blower going, so this must be Thursday. So this might get a maiden run on on uh, the following Monday. Anyway, just so everybody knows, what do we have here? We have a ZTW, uh, the latest version, 50 amp ESC. We have an 1107 2Y new motor that's uh, 4,500 kV. We have a, uh, a really nice MHZ uh, collet coupler. I'm going to start off with something about 27 millimeters. The uh, calculator says I should be down in about the 30 amp range at that. So that's kind of where I want to start off is around 30 amps and see how that goes. My water pickup is now finalized. You notice it no longer crashes with the servo uh, servo arm there. I have the TFL mounted on the uh, generic rudder bracket and I had changed the angle and angle on the rudder for some other reason, but that's good now. I have a turn fin on a carbon fiber bracket. I've ordered uh, just slightly longer screws because I want to get some bite into the nylock there. And, uh, okay, so the stuffing tube. I don't think I ever really talked about the stuffing tube. If you look at the stuffing tube, when I filled it in with pot epoxy, I used the bare minimum I could. And this is a mix of mostly cabosil, which weighs nothing, with some epoxy, and you notice I have the least amount of epoxy I could get in there to uh, seal that gap. Additionally, I had to drop the motor down really low to uh, clear the cooling coils under the hatch. So the motor's down as low as I could get it, which meant I had to file off the edge of this little epoxy dam piece. So the stuffing tube's really low. I don't have much brake angle in it at all, which is good. So um, I'm thinking the initial setup, the initial run, I should be pretty close. I should be pretty close to where I need to be. It'll take some adjustment, but not a whole lot. So there is the status of the rigger. I should be able to test it out on, on uh, next Monday. Now, what I really came to talk about, I had planned to do a little uh, V-Hull, that little yellow one, first. But Wayne approached me the other day and said he wanted to build a particular project and I said, you know, I've always wanted to build one of those. And I have a motor that I think would be a good motor for that. And so uh, we went ahead and ordered them. Now, I have that hull's little baby sister. Here is that hull's little baby sister. This is the 17 inch version of the boat. And the one Wayne and I just ordered is 25 inches so it's a considerably larger boat but uh, in the order of this thing it's not going to be a whole lot bigger footprint than uh, this outrigger here but 
it's going to be of this general appearance, you know, uh, fiberglass construction in that case. This one happens to be the black stuff, but this is for another time and another place. But that's what my plan is with Wayne. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a parallel build off because I want to see Wayne succeed. And if he goes off on his own, he might make some choices based on something that he heard somebody once say a long time ago in a bar someplace in India, you know, so um, I'll help him out with that. And I think this motor, now this is the 3400 RPM per volt version of the Rocket 2968. This is a nice motor. I have the 4000 RPM per version rpm per volt version in the silver bullet and quite frankly that thing's over the top it's a little bit too much i think this would be a, a bit better motor in terms of just durability and such because i want to build something that's dependable and rugged and with a focus on light weight so i'm going to use <clears throat> the small end of motors that you would use in a hull like that. I'm going to run it on 3S, which is going to keep everything light. And maybe we'll make this, since that's a nice hull. In fact, let's go re revisit the hull. We might make this more about looks than absolute all out top speed. If it's fast enough to turn heads and make people go, wow, that's fast enough. So this particular boat has these little aft wings and those were common, oh, from about 1990 to 1994. So there's a number of hulls in that range and then plus or minus a few years, you know, because a lot of these hulls got passed down to other competitors. So uh, look for boats in that time period. And there's a lot of hulls you can model after. So Wayne's picked out one of the, the Budweiser boats because they're real easy. Just paint it red and put white stickers on it. And uh, I have another idea that, you know, it'll get jetted. So... Um, Stay tuned for that. Hulls are on order. I have motors. I'm going to get uh, a, a, a just generic running gear to put on it. Nothing special or exotic. And if anybody wants to build along with Jet, you're more than welcome to. I'll include links to uh, the, uh, the hull in this video. I'll include links to this motor. And this motor mount, I tell you what, I like this motor mount. And what I really like about it is it's so easy to get the motor in and out. And people look at it and go, oh, it's not solid. It's not. You know what? For this size motor, that sucker is plenty solid. Plenty solid. And one bolt and the motor's out. Put a new one in. Oh, you're... Cooling lines are just off the wrong thing. Rotate the motor a little bit. Much better, much better. If you can use this mount, by all means use it. Yeah, there are cases where you have to bolt it in, you know, like if you're trying to hide the motor up inside, like I did in another one of these, I actually hid the motor up inside here and the speed control was up into here. Uh, that was an effort to get it to balance. Anyway, so if you want to build along with Jet, I'll, I'll leave links and away we go. So there you go. Until next time, Jet out.